Dr. Fizz, Theoretical Physics. We continue with the principle of least action, and here we're going to pick up and continue from what we had last time. We had this definition set up so that the game that we were trying to play to see who would win the game by moving clocks around, we came up with minimizing this, whoever had the least value for this thing, and this is called the action by the way, and the integrand here is the Lagrangian, integrating the Lagrangian here, the difference between the kinetic and potential energy over the hour of the game has to be Minimize, and if both people minimize, then it's a tie. Uh, Richard Feynman's uh, lectures on physics, uh, originally published in 1964. We're going to look at volume two, chapter 19, The Principle of Least Action, and pretty much follow Feynman's approach here. So this is continuing the second section. So if you haven't seen the first video, check out W1. And here we're going to work with this action and minimize it. So we're going to uh, replace uh, the potential energy with the general form of the potential energy here, the V of X. Uh, in the previous video I used Z here for the height and we're just going to replace this with X to have this general formula, one half mv squared minus the potential energy. That's our action, this integral. So how do we do this? Well, we use the calculus of variations and the calculus of variations goes along this kind of an approach. Uh, I'm not going to derive the traditional formula in the calculus of variations as I do in math class. I'm going to do what Feynman does here, use this particular integral to show you how to do that kind of calculus of variation uh, argument. Well, we want to go from A to B and you're going to have some time to get from one place to the other. Well, the best path to get from A to B, which I've labeled here as a straight line, uh, which will not be a straight line in general for, for this case, but I just made this uh, from the prototype problem where you're calculating the distance, uh, like what is the shortest time to get from one place to another. So don't take this straight line seriously, just look at that as an argument where if this happens to be the best possible solution, I put the bar over it, then these are solutions that are not as good. The This one here consists of x of t without the bar is equal to the one with the bar here plus the deviation. A is the deviation. So I look at some general path from A to B as a sum of the best solution, the, the solution that minimizes this, plus some deviation. So here I plot x versus t. Uh, so here if I want the x along my path, it's the best x, x bar, plus the deviation. Then I use calculus uh, rules to take my derivative and for my potential energy, I simply had the potential energy at the point along the path, some arbitrary path and a point x as equal to the function there is going to be x to get me up to here, x bar plus eta to get all the way up there to the top. So using that idea, I then have this formula becomes the velocity with the sum of the two parts and in here the x gets to be replaced by the x bar plus the eta. For the velocity, we square it and we get then three terms. We have the first one squared plus two times the cross term plus the last one squared. And then we notice that when we're very, very close to the path that this term is going to be small. So we're going to write this as the first two terms with higher order terms. We mean eta, higher order terms in eta. And this is a, a theme in the calculus of variations where you want to get that best path and you look at excursions away from that best path, path as, that are small. Kind of like what you do when you do a max-min problem. You look at the the minimum and if you move a little bit to the left and to the right you find a little flat region there, a little slope is, is zero. So it's a kind of same kind of argument to do minor excursions about the ideal solution. So since we're doing minor excursions uh, this uh, is a small quantity, we throw it away and this is our velocity and then for the V we do a Taylor series expansion in the small excursion parameter, the little eta here, and we see that 
eta gets squared there and we're going to throw those away and think of this like your regular you know taking a regular derivative uh, to find a minimum uh, you know your slope is zero you pull this one right out here and that helps you solve for a max or a min so the kind of idea here is uh, similar although more general uh, in fact quite different in a sense because what we're minimizing here is not a, a function but we're minimizing not trying to find the minimum of a function or a maximum of a function but a max or a minimum of an integral and sometimes that you hear the talk functional so we're working with a functional so this is a little more complicated here so um, step one is uh, simply uh, look at the path, arbitrary path, as the ideal path plus an, an ex, a, a deviation. Uh, so then you do the substitutions, and since that deviation is small, you neglect anything that has eta squared. Or say so here's an eta is going to be squared there, d eta dt is squared. We throw that away, and we throw away this one here, and we come down here to just having the eta with one power of eta, one power of eta there. So this is what we have. And then we group the terms and say, hey, you know, for the ideal path, you got this thing, which means this has to be zero. And it's amazing that by dealing with this argument like this in some abstract way, we're actually getting a differential equation that helps us find what this thing over on the left is. That's kind of weird, but bear with us as we go. So here we want the variation, the variation in the action. This is the variation where we take a path that's not ideal and that variation must vanish. So this part must vanish because this is the good stuff here that will give me the minimum. So this part must vanish. So the variation of the action, which is this part over here, that must go away. And now I'm ready to use my arbitrary argument with those eta's. I pull that eta out. I don't have an eta there, but I can get one there by integration by parts to move that ddt over to the left. That's the secret in the calculus of variations. So we do that with the integration by parts. Let's come down here and let's set up the d dt to be moved over to free up that eta. So to free up that eta there, uh, I'm going to really want this thing. That's what I'm aiming for. So I want d x bar dt as one thing to look at and then eta as the other one and use the product rule of differentiation here, the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And what I want up in here is a replacement. I want to replace this thing so I can get the eta by itself and pull it out. And then the other thing that I get here doesn't cause me any problem, as you'll see. So let's do that. Let's uh, solve for this here. That's what we have over here. We need this derivative minus this second derivative as we have arrived at using the product rule. So we do that, we then get this result right here where we have now three integrals to do because we replaced the one with the, with the two. And this first one uh, lifts no problem because you have the derivative and you have the integral and that's gonna lift right up for us. And we do that and the other integrals here I simply have copied down again. Uh, notice that I pull the minus sign out so that I have these two with the plus sign in there. So what is this thing here? Evaluate at the limits. And here where there's a magical thing happening for us. We have agreed that all the paths go from A to B, which means the eta is zero at the beginning and at the end because you, you gotta start at A, you gotta end up at B. So no deviations, no excursions, from the beginning when time you know the, the trip starts and when the trip ends you have to have those agree with all the paths so therefore the variation or, or the excursion the eta is zero at those limits and that leaves us then with this to do and we now pull out the eta use the old eta as an arbitrary trick since the eta is arbitrary can you take any path, you can take any path you want, then this has to vanish identically, that has to be zero. So we come down here and write this down. And do you see what that is?
That is Newton's second law. That's amazing. Newton's second law does the trick. In other words, let's look at this carefully. This is the acceleration. Now, since I've had I have gotten here the best path. I'll just drop the bars. Uh, so here's here's the path it's going to take. This is the acceleration. Mass times acceleration. That's the force. And guess what this is? When you bring it to the other side of the equation, it's minus the derivative of the uh, potential energy with respect to the variable, and that is the force. So in other words, this is F equals ma. Amazing. That in other words, to win the game that we set up in the first part, we have to obey Newton's law.